Okay, today I want to talk about the five stages of academic censorship, which is something that we've experienced uniquely really since uh, we started submitted papers that question the COVID narrative. I've never had any real problems before. I've had over 300 peer-reviewed papers published as well as uh, six books. So it's not as if this is something that I'm not experienced with. So in the COVID era, what we had was that initially, when we weren't challenging the narrative, actually, we had our papers accepted. But then the first stage of censorship was when papers that were slightly challenging the narrative were getting reviewed after we submitted to the journals. But even if the reviews were favourable, the editors would then find a reason to submit it to a new reviewer who would find some reason to reject it. The second stage of censorship was where we submitted the journals and the editors decided without sending it out for review that the paper wasn't suitable. They would say it was not sufficiently novel or something like that. The third stage submitted and even without any editorial re review whatsoever, they would say that this paper is out of scope. The fourth stage of censorship was that, well, if we can't submit it to the journals, we at least can put them up on the preprint servers, which initially we were able to do, but then the preprint servers were rejecting our papers. This is almost unheard of. The final stage of censorship, which is something that I never believe could possibly happen, is that they tried to delegitimize and get redacted previously published papers, which have got nothing to do with COVID, simply to try and discredit us. And this has recently, in my case, been done on the basis of completely spurious claims of undeclared conflicts of interest. That just gives you an indication of what academics who challenge the official narrative are really up against.